So let's get into today's session. And what I'm hoping excited you about the title is how to invest with as little as 500 Rand. And I think that's what, what's important, guys. You don't need a lot of money to get started. You do need a bit of money, but more than money, you need time. Okay. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know me, um, I'm an investor, an author. I've also founded this company called My Property App, which helps uh, property investors analyze deals with more uh, confidence and, and certainty. Uh, sorry, I actually just forgot to push the record button here. Uh, there we go. Just want to make sure that this is recorded for those of you who can't attend tonight. Um, in terms of property, my specialization is in student accommodation. And uh, yeah, there's my YouTube handle, Lawrence Property Coach. I upload weekly videos about the property market. So go check it out if you're interested in knowing more about property and you want to have some free content. I put lots, well, loads on. Um, tonight's uh, event is sponsored by uh, the principles of successful investing. And, and it's something that I talk about in my book. The one is spend less than you earn. Critical. Start now with compounding. And we're going to unpack what is, what is compounding. Uh, automate your investments, reinvest your profits, um, and build a system, ultimately. So the key word for today and the key mindset shift that we have to get into is automate. That is what today is about. Okay, so I thought we could talk about how to become an automatic millionaire. Now, uh, there is a great book um, called Automatic Millionaire. Um, I read it a couple of years ago, and it really changed my thinking about how to how to schedule and Put, a, put together my investment process. So go check that book out. I'd highly recommend it. Okay, quickly, the agenda. So uh, I'm going to start off by just introducing you guys to investing. You know, uh, we always have a range of people that come on the call. Some people are savvy investors, some are beginners. So we're trying to, you know, accommodate everybody and, and really giving the basics up front, then talking about compound interest. And, and guys, once you grasp compound interest, you can change your financial future in, in 20 years guaranteed, uh, which is really exciting. The Automatic Millionaire, how to guarantee financial success. Um, and then I'm going to end with the real estate investment trusts and how to actually buy into a property business with less than 500 rand. Okay, so let's jump right in. Introduction to investing. Introduction to investing. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is, is why to invest. Right. You know, um, and, and this is a question I get a lot is, is, is why should I do it? And I think the reality is that if you don't, your future is going to be unsecure. Um, this is a article that I read recently on the news that said uh, SA's retirement savings crisis is deepening. And these are some of the stats. So only around 72 percent of women across all demographics have either a vague, meaning not really much plan or no savings at all. That's very scary. In South Africa in general, 67% of South Africans have little to no savings or retirement plans. And I think COVID has really brought to light how, how, how deep our crisis is. Um, so the question is, is, is what about you? You know, are, are you, do you have a plan to retirement? You know, have you spoken to somebody at Discovery and they've given you these promises as to what you could achieve? Or, or do you take control of your finances? Because what I've realized is that no one's going to care about your money as much as you do. So you need to make sure that you've got a, a successful plan. So that's why, to, to safeguard your future so that your future is better than your past. That's why we invest, to try and make something better of our lives to come. Here's another uh, statistic as to why investing is important. South Africa's retirement is a time bomb ticking ever louder. We all need to urgently confront this reality to prevent an even greater proportion of South Africans slipping into poverty at retirement. All right. Okay, so now we know why. Why investing is important. What is investing? Well, simply for me, it's three things. One, it's learning to spend less than you earn. Right? You, need, you need a bit of money to invest. You don't need a lot of money, but you need a little bit. So that's the key principle, the first one. The second one is investing, whatever you can save, investing in above inflation compounded interest instruments, which I will, exp will, will, will discuss in today's section. And then balancing risk and reward. If you can get those three principles right, 
you can become an investor. Spend less than you earn. So have a budget in place. Make sure that you're earning more than you're spending. Have 5,000, uh, 500, 5,000, 50,000, whatever you can save. Reinvest that into compounded interest instruments and then balance your risk and reward as you get older. That is the science of investing. So let's get a bit more practical. Let's say that you've got 100,000 Rand. You know, you've saved it up over the last two, three years or you came into some inheritance or whatever it may be. The question is now, what can you do with this 100,000 Rand? Okay, now you can choose to invest in, you know, here's three examples of what you could do. You could invest it in a bank account. So you could put that 100,000 Rand into your standard bank or APSA savings account and let it grow there. You could maybe use that as a down payment to buy a property or buy an investment property where you rent it out. You know, or you could take some of that money and you could invest it in the stock market, buy a few companies or, or whatnot. Now, when you're looking at these three different instruments, you have to be able to compare them with each other. Now, the banks use a term called interest rate. Now, interest rate is basically what they're saying to you is your return for leaving your money with the bank. It's what's the bonus for you. In property, we use the term return on investment, which is when I put money in, how much am I getting back? How hard is my money working for me? In the stock market, they usually use the word return. Guys, those all three pretty much mean the same thing, right? Now, if, let's, like, let's take the bank example, okay? The interest rate for an average savings account might be 5%, right? So that's, if you've got 100,000 Rand in a fixed deposit somewhere, you'll probably get 5%. So you invest 100,000, your profit is the 100,000 times 5%, which means you're gonna make, in a year's time, your money will have grown by 5,000 Rand. All right, so your total money at the end of the year is 105000 So that's if you decided to leave your money in a bank account. Boom. Now you've got also your property side. Now let's say that you come across a property deal that can give you 15% return, which is the same as interest, right? It's the same as the bank's interest rate. Now you're investing 100000 Your return is now 15000 right? And your total money is 115000 Can you see that... 5% interest is a third of the 15% and the profit is a third of the 15% profit. So essentially what you're seeing there is using the property deal, your property investment is three times more lucrative or three times a better investment than putting it in the bank. Okay. Now let's say you go to the stock market, you go a little bit aggressive, you go quite risky um, and it brings you a 20% return. Again, you invest 100,000. You make a 20,000 Rand profit, you left with 120,000 Rand. Now this all looks really good and promising and, and the obvious situation here would be, I'm gonna put my money in the stock market. But this is where risk comes in. Because as much as it's tempting to go for the 20% return because you wanna, you wanna grow your money quickly, you've gotta have a balance between some safe assets and some aggressive or you know more, um, more, uh, yeah, more aggressive um, investment opportunities. So here's the perfect example. Let's say you're looking at a property investment, okay? On the left-hand side, we've got a Santon two-bedroom apartment in Douglasdale, really nice area up and coming. Um, you know, it's, it's close to the city center to, you know, obviously Santon, the richest square mile in, in South Africa. It's ideal for professional tenants. It's got a good payment history. It's a safe deal. It's a really, you know, I think, a, a great opportunity. And then you've got on the right hand side, you've got a Berea apartment. Berea is in, in the middle of the CBD. Um, and in terms of its trends, it's, it's more a low income area. It's got a very high density and crime rate. And the, the payment history could be sometimes a little bit detrimental. So now the thing is, are we looking at this in terms of, of which one is a better investment? Okay. So let's say on the Santon apartment one, you can make 10,000 Rand rental. Okay. Your expenses every month are 9500 because you have to pay for the bond and for the levies and the rates and taxes. So you're making a profit of 500 Rand per month and the return on investment is 4%. Okay, so this is basically saying it's a low risk deal. It's like putting your money into the bank. The bank's going to give you 5%, so it's a low risk, low return deal. Does that make sense? Risk and reward are like two, si two sides of the same coin. Right, they've, they're, they're interlinked. So the higher your return is, or what you want your higher return to be, you must also then have an appetite to take that risk. Right? If we look at the Berea side, now here you can make income of 8,000. 
your expenses are a lot lower because the purchase price is the third of what you're buying in Santon. Your profit is 3,000, your return is 40, uh, sorry, 16%. So what that's saying is from a financial perspective, Berea is four times, or this specific deal, the Berea apartment is four times better than the Santon apartment from a purely numbers-based point of view. Right. So okay, can you start to see that risk follows reward? Yes, it's riskier to go to Berea, but the return's also there. You know, I tell people that, that want to get into the property market but don't want to lose money, just buy from a new, just buy a new build from a developer. You're not going to make a lot of money. You won't actually make any money, but you won't lose either. It's probably the safest, lowest risk, lowest return um, opportunity. Right, now the question is, how do you balance this risk, <laughs> right? If risk follows reward, is there a way we can reduce our risk while increasing the potential reward? And that's where asset allocation comes from. Now, that's a great quote. I'm not sure who said it. I think it might be Warren Buffett, but it's, it's probably some investment guru. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you can keep. <laughs> it's not about how much money you can make. It's more about how much of that money you can keep. Now, I like to look at investing with the mindset of a security bucket and a growth bucket. Okay. Now, the security bucket are your low-risk equally low return opportunities. Okay, now low risk means that there's not probably gonna go anything wrong with it, but the return is obviously not attractive. Then you've got your growth side, high risk, high return. Now, if I had maybe a thousand rand to invest per month, I'd want to distribute it between my security bucket and my growth bucket, right? Now, how much you wanna split it is totally up to you and your situation. Uh, for me, I'm personally 30 years old, so, for me, I'm probably going to put 70% of my investment capability into the growth side. I'm willing to take a little bit more risk. You know, I'm still quite young. If I had to have a collapse now, I'd still have enough time to, to rebound, if I can put it that way. Maybe if you're 50 or 60 years old, you've only got a couple of years left of, of your, your, you know, your full-time employment, you might want to switch it up. You might want to be 70% secure and 30% on growth. You know, so, so it depends definitely on your age and, and what kind of, I guess, threat uh, or risk appetite you have at that time. Obviously, the older you get, it makes more sense to go more and more security. Okay, so here's an example of my um, asset allocation. So on the security side, one of the things I am a very big advocate of is the tax-free investments. If you don't have a tax-free account, please phone, phone your banker or get in contact with any bank it's probably one of the best secure uh, investment vehicles that I am aware of. What's great about it is that any interest earned within that investment is tax-free. Guys, tax is probably the biggest killer of wealth. If you can just start investing in your tax-free account, you're going to do wonders. The return on investment that I'm getting is 3.5. It's very low. I'm doing it with Standard Bank. It's secure. It's safe. I'm not going for a high return because I'm not going for a high risk. Uh, an RA, a re uh, retirement annuity. The only reason I would recommend doing an RA is because you get great tax relief. Um, in terms of returns, you can see there that my return of my portfolio is 4.4. It's a disaster, but I get a rebate for uh, the money that I invest in my RA. Eventually, at the end of the tax season, I get a rebate from, from SARS. So that's quite cool. I've got a savings account, 2.5%. The savings account is three to six months worth of runway. Now, that's another mindset that the wealthy have is that I have to have at least three to six months worth of expenses saved up because if another COVID hits or if another situation hits, I can at least survive for three months. If I lose my job, I've got three months worth of runway to go find a new job or start a new hustle. You know, so that, that's a very, very important um, opportunity. And then policies, you know, insurance policies or life policies are also a very secure, safe investment. So what you can see on the left are safe investments with low returns because they're low risk, okay? On the growth side of things, I've got a, a stocks and shares portfolio and that's sitting at about 18.75%. I'll share a little bit with you guys just now. Property, obviously I'm, I'm big into property and that's a 16.5%. A uh, business, 28%. And then I've got a, a couple of loans out and I loan out at 15%. So that's giving you a sense of a higher risk category that's got a much higher return. But one of the things that is so important to realize is that return can also mean loss. 
profit can also mean loss. So yes, you've got the potential to make 18% profit in buying stocks and shares, but you also equally have a chance to lose 18%. Does that make sense? Um, in terms of my asset allocation, 40% in my security bucket is currently there and 60% of my wealth is in the growth bucket. So again, you know, I'm, I'm still a young guy. So for me, that kind of um, asset allocation makes sense. So here, quickly before we, we go on to the next section, reward and risk scale. So I mentioned that reward and risk are uh, different sides of the same coin. So let's imagine that there's a scale on this reward, right? On the left-hand side is you losing money. So you're losing 20% or losing 15% or 5%. And on the right-hand side, you're gaining 5%, 15 or 20%, right? Now let's say that you go for an investment. Um, you save in a, in a RA, a retirement annuity, and it's a very stable return. You're getting four or 5%, that's what you project. Right now, if you have the potential to make 5% return, you also have the potential to lose 5%. That's the way you've got to look at it. Yes, the potential return must be inverse for me to understand the potential loss. Okay, so when you're looking at a safe return, a safe investment, you're playing in that, in that 5 to minus 5%. Maybe you want to go a little bit more aggressive. You want to go for property investment. Now, the property investment promises to bring a 15% return. But because it's a higher risk deal, it also has the potential to help you lose 15%. Does that make sense? That's the important thing is you've got to, yes, chase the return, but you've also got to be able to accept the risk that goes with that. Now, my philosophy is if I'm going for a 5 percent investment i need to make sure that the reward is worth it it needs to be uh, you know in the longer term scale makes sense for me so like an ra makes sense even though i'm just getting five percent i get the tax rebate so there has to be a bigger reward if i'm going for a higher risk deal i need to make sure that i'm comfortable with the risk that i'm comfortable with potentially losing 15 percent. that's the way you you've got to look at it so guys, that was just a quick introduction to investing some of the key principles and it's really spend less than you earn, invest for compound interest, and finally make sure that you asset allocate so that you protect your wealth. Now, I've been speaking about compound interest. Let's, let's actually understand what this is. Now, compound interest, when you understand this and you use it, anyone can change their financial futures with enough time. Right? That's the beauty of this specific concept is it works on time. Okay, so I'm going to use an example. It's a golfing example. Um, so now in golf, you've essentially got 18 holes, right? Um, that's, that's a normal golf game. Now let's imagine that, um, you know, I, I'm playing with a friend of mine and I say to my friend, you know, let's, let's play for a bit of money. You know, every hole, you know, give me 10 rand or something like that, you know? Um, and then my friend might say, he'll say, uh, no, Lawrence, you know what? Let's get 10 cents for the first hole. And then we double it, okay? So 10 cents in the first hole, 20 cents in the second hole because you're doubling it, 40 cents in the third hole, 80 cents in the fourth hole, and so forth and so on. So you're doubling every hole, right? This is an example of compound interest. So let's, let's work this out together. First of all, hole one is worth 10 cents. So if I win hole one, he pays me 10 cents. The second hole is double 10 cents, so it's 20 cents, okay? The third hole is double that, which is four cents. Eight cents, 1.6. So one rand 60 by the fifth hole. Now, what do you think the 18th hole is gonna be worth, right? Let's go again. The ninth hole is 25 rand and 60 cents, okay? So we're halfway through the game, okay? We're halfway to 18, and the ninth hole is worth 25 rand. So what are we thinking that the 18th hole is maybe worth 100, 150, maybe 500 rand even? Well, this is now where compounding starts to take control. The 15th hole is now worth 1,638 rand. The 18th hole is worth 13,107 rand and 20 cents. The rich stay rich because they use compound interest to their advantage. Guys, this, this is the game changer. With enough compound interest, anybody can change their financial future. So I already spoke about the tax-free investment. Guys, the, the power of this one is you don't get any tax, nothing 
on the returns from this investment. That is a huge, huge bonus. Unfortunately, there is a maximum contribution of 36,000 per year. That's the max that you can invest. So let's imagine that you, after this webinar, you see so much value in the tax-free investment, you go and create one with whoever your banker is, and you decide to commit just 3,000 Rand per month, right, until you've maxed out your maximum contribution. Now, if we look at compound interest, we can compare how powerful interest can be. So here's an example of you investing 3,000 Rand per month, which is that amount there in year one is 36,000, right? That's the max you can invest in this tax-free account. Let's assume your interest rate is 6%. That means the total amount, the end of year one, is 38,220. That's how much money, uh, that's how much your money has grown. Right in year two, you invest another 3,000 Rand per month. And in year three, four, five, etc. What you're seeing at the bottom there is how much your money would be worth after 20 years. So by just investing 3,000 Rand per month, for 20 years, every single person on this webinar tonight can call themselves a millionaire in 20 years' time, right? Because 6% is really easy to get. Most banks will be offering 6%, and that's a very secure investment. So with enough time and with enough dedication of 3,000 Rand every single month, you can become a millionaire in 20 years. Now, 6% is quite low. Let's say you were a bit more aggressive. Let's say you went for a 12% return. Now what you're seeing is at the end of 20 years, instead of 1.4 million, you have 3.164 million. That's more than double. That's the power of having the right interest rate or the right return. Let's go one higher. Now we've got an 18% return. And the total amount or the total value of your portfolio is sitting at 7 million rand. Guys, that is the power of interest and compounding. Now, what you need to do is you need to look at these two numbers, right? The difference is massive. That's why you need to also be a bit aggressive. Yes, you've got to go for secure investments. You've got to go for your RAs and your life policies and those kind of things. But you should also go out and venture into something else. Be it stocks. Be it your own business. Be it property. You know, there's many other ways. Now, these are your different buckets, right? You should have a bucket of investments that are safe, they're secure, they're the 6%. They slowly but surely are going to get me to become a millionaire. But then you also sprinkle in a bit of an 18% return and a, maybe a 12% return. Now this is a very interesting slide for me because what you're seeing here is how many years it'll take based on how much of your salary you can save. So right on the top there you'll see if you save 5%, of your salary, it'll take you 60 years, 66 years to retire. If you're saving 10%, it'll take you 51 years. If you're saving 50% of your monthly salary, 43 years, and then all the way down. Currently, I'm sitting on about probably 50% in terms of what I save per month. Now, the, now people often come to me and they say, that's crazy. There's no way I could save 50% of my salary. And guys, in the beginning, I couldn't either. You know, when I first started at my first job, uh, seven, eight years ago, um, I wasn't earning enough to put anything aside, you know. Um, but every time I got an increase, so every time I moved position and I made a bit of money, I took half of whatever my increase was and I put that into my investment portfolio. So any time that you have an increase, you can always increase your savings account, right? But this is a very important slide to look at to say, hey, you know, the reality is I'm only saving 5% of my salary. It's going to take me another 66 years of working just to retire. I may be on the wrong plan here. I need to maybe go for a better um, or bigger portion that I'm going to save. So guys, that's compound interest. Over a period of time, it is something that grows exponentially. I'm telling you, it's the seventh or eighth or ninth wonder of the world. It is something that when you master it, uh, you can change anyone's financial destiny in, a, in, in, in 20 years' time. Okay. So we've spoken about, you know, why investing, what is investing, uh, the basics of, you know, balancing risk and reward and looking at different investment classes and asset allocation. We've also looked at compound interest when used correctly, it can grow an incredible amount of wealth. Now the question is, how do we make it automatic? How do we make it so that our human biases don't get in the way? Okay, now why the wealthy stay wealthy, in my opinion, 
is because they spend less than they earn. They, uh, they stay wealthy because they act like they're broke. And broke people stay broke acting wealthy. I think that's something that always resonated with me is that the wealthy, they know how to they know how to manage their own finances. And the biggest tip that I can give you is don't ever see it. When you get a salary and whatever your salary amount is, before you touch that money, you've already put a portion into your savings account or into your investment fund. That is one of the key things. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes, um, the adjective, the poor. It's when you have too much month at the end, uh, <laughs> end of your money. Um, and I'm sure, uh, you know, there's a lot of us on the, on the call that can relate with that. You know, you, you get to the 20th, the 21st of the month, and you're just waiting on that paycheck, and you're eating two-minute noodles and, you know, whatever it is just to survive. Um, unfortunately, I think if you want to be an investor, one of the things you have to do is you have to pay yourself first. Okay, now this is an example of a poor man's cash flow statement. Now, cash flow is income minus expenses. So a poor man, a poor man has got a salary, let's say, of 20,000 rand. Okay, that's his total income. A poor man's cash flow statement will have a lot of expenses, things like house, car, insurance, entertainment, groceries, etc. And at the end of the month, if there is a profit, where usually there isn't, that profit is then taken out at a panerotis and takes the family out or takes her family out for dinner, right? That's, that's how most people think is use the 20,000 rand and if, we, if anything is left over at the end, we can decide what to do with it. Now, that's usually what becomes people's uh, pension plan. You know, they say, you know, whatever's left over at the end of the month, I'll invest uh, for my future. But there's nothing ever at the end of the month. So that's a poor man's cash flow statement. They don't focus on investing in themselves. Now, a rich man's cash flow statement, right? First of all, they're going to have a salary, but they're also going to have additional income. They're going to have rental income, a little business, a side hustle, whatever it is, because a rich man knows that working for a boss will never create true wealth. You have to be building your own dream while you're helping someone build theirs. Have the certainty and security of a nice salary, but between 5 and 9 p.m. in the evenings, you've got to be hustling your other, your, your other income streams. Otherwise, you're always going to be stuck, I guess, to to your employer. Now, the first expense on a rich man's cash flow statement is investments. So the first thing that comes off my statement every month is my money that goes to my different investments. Automatically, it goes through debit order via my Standard Bank app. I'll show you how that looks just now. Everything is automated so that when I wake up on the 29th or the 30th of the month, um, my salary's come in, my bond has gone off, my car's gone off, my investments have gone off, my insurances have gone off, everything's gone off. I'm left with, let's say, 5,000 Rand, and that becomes then what I can spend for the month. And I have to just live within those parameters. Right, house and car, entertainment. What you'll see here is I do have an entertainment section, but it will be a lot less than your poor man's entertainment section. The poor man was going at 4,000. The rich man will go at 2,000 because part of the keys to, uh, to becoming wealthy is to limit your expenditure, you know, because rich people stay rich by acting poor. It's not about splurging the money as soon as you get it. Um, so, yeah, that's an example of how, how, the, how the two different mindsets work. So my key advice for you here today is pay yourself first, right? You've got to have, you're going to have to pay your bill collectors, you're going to have to pay your rent, your electricity, all of that, I get that, but make sure that one of the first payments that comes off is the 500 rand that you're going to put in your RA or the 5,000 rand that you're going to put into some stocks, wherever you're at. Remember, compound interest doesn't discriminate. As long as you've got enough time, you can, through compounding, build and amass enormous wealth. So here's an example of how I've automated my process. Um, the bank that I use is Standard Bank. I think they've got a great online platform, but you can use whichever one you want, whoever your banker is. I don't think there's a big difference. Now, in my Standard Bank app, I've got an option here to go and manage scheduled payments. Okay, So scheduled payments are almost like automatic debit orders. So here I've put a scheduled payment where I send my money to um, a stock trading platform called Easy Equities. Every month, 5,200 Rand goes off on the 29th of the month. So I get my salary on the 26th, 27th and 28th, my house and my car and all of those expenses go off. 29th, my investment goes off. You know, and then 31st, first, some other more small like contracts will go off and then eventually I'll be left with my budget for the month and living within those means. So this is something that goes off and I'm so used to it now that it doesn't even bug me 
you know. Um, again, when I first started, I was saving maybe 5% of my salary. Now I save comfortably 50%, uh, you know, between my easy equities, between my property portfolio, I'm constantly investing a sizable portion every month into that because I know if I'm saving 50% of my salary, it's going to take me 17 years to retire and I can live with those numbers. You know what I mean? Um, here's also maybe just some other thoughts to, to help you get started becoming an investor. So these are some of the products that, uh, Santa Bank has. This is a pure savings account. For me, I definitely think everybody needs a short-term emergency fund. You know, between one to three months of your salary should be in there. That's for, you know, fixing whatever you need fixed. Or if you had to lose your job, at least you've got some money. Um, I know it's not easy, uh, you know, to save that amount of money. F for some people, might seem almost impossible. I get that. Um, but I, I also think it's a reality that, that you need to care more about your finances than anybody else. I also believe in having some long-term retirement funds. So my tax call, my tax-free call, this is the, this is the one you need to look for the one that you can get up to 36,000 per year. That's the tax-free one. No taxes paid on your dividends, which is great. Um, and then I've also got a market link account. This is a more longer term investment fund. So let's say that, uh, you know, you're looking to buy a property, you might open a market link account and, you know, put 3,000 Rand in per month for a couple of years until you've built up enough for a, a down payment or a deposit on the property. So, you know, again, I'm not saying that this is the perfect strategy. I'm just sharing with you guys what, what I've learned and what I've implemented. So short term emergency fund, one to three months, long term, also one to three months of my salary, but also expanding it if I want to make an investment at some point. And then the tax free call, that is my very long term next 20 25 years just going to let that build now the question is always where to invest you know and, and your options are simple you can get a professional right you can go to the likes of a discovery or a ppe or an alexander forbes or any of these guys and you'll get professional advice um my opinion is that uh because of fees these uh professionals pretty much destroy the returns that you could have and that's why I don't go for them. So here's an example, a quick uh, example from a great book, which I would recommend. It's called Money Master by Tony Robbins. Now, what you're seeing on this slide is the impact of fees. Now, when you go to a discovery or old mutual, any of these places, they're going to charge you a fee, an admin fee and a transaction fee and a sale fee. There'll be a whole bunch of fees. Now, if you had invested a million rand or a million dollars, this is, the, is this example, at an 8% return over 30 years, what you're seeing there is the top number, the 7.6 million. That's if Discovery or whoever your provider was charged you only 1% fees. You lose about $2 million because somebody or because the company's charging 2% fees. And at 3% fees, you're only making now 4.3 million. So, my thinking is if Discovery is going to give me uh, an average return of 6, 5, 6%, and they're going to charge an additional 3% fees on top of that, I might as well manage my own money. You know, I mean, here is a clear stat. If you go for a high fee, you're going to lose a substantial amount of your money. So that's an option. If you're very busy and you're happy for somebody else to manage your money, I've got an RA with Discovery. It's something that, that works really well, but that's all that I have with them because my stocks I need to be managing, my property I need to be managing, my, my finances I need to be managing. They're one small cog. So if you do go for professionals, I would recommend that you use multiple different ones for different reasons. You know, So um, you want to be able to also get their feedback against each other, um, which I think is important. Or... You can invest in yourself. You can get your own knowledge, skills, resources to be able to, um, you know, invest in the stock market or in the property market. So either get a professional or invest in yourself. Now, if you do want to invest in yourself, this is the platform that I'd recommend. It's called Easy Equities. Now, um, I don't get any money from promoting this company. This is just something that I've used and really enjoyed. Um, I'm sure there's lots of competing products, but essentially it's an online platform where you can buy indexes now an index is a very important term you've got a company let's say we've got coca-cola here now coca-cola you can buy a share of coca-cola which means you're a part owner of coca-cola okay or what you can do is you can buy into a group of companies you know so let's say instead of just investing in coca-cola you want to invest in all the different uh, beverage brands 
and there creates an index. So the stock exchange will create an index and you can then buy into that index. And that I think is very, very important because when you've got an index that tracks the market, you've probably got the highest likelihood of success with limited time. Okay, so www.easyequities.coza. This is where I do all of my stock sharing. Um, super easy to set up and super easy to manage. You can see here that my portfolio is bringing a, an 18.7% return. Um, here's just a little bit more detail of how I've diversified. So I went for companies. Um, I went for two indexes. The one is Global Top 1200. What that means is the top 1,200 companies in the world, they've all packaged together into this one, let's call it bucket of shares, and I've bought into that. So I own a very, 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 very small sliver of the top 1,200 companies and their performance. And that for me is a very safe investment because I think the top 1,200 companies, they've been in business for 50 plus years, they're probably gonna stay in business. And then I also went a little bit more risky and I went for the top tech 20 companies. So your Googles, your Amazons, your et cetera. I also have a commodities focus, so gold and silver. Silver is very underpriced at the moment, it's gonna shoot up, so there's I think a huge opportunity there. And then Forex, you know, so a little bit in dollars, euros, and bitcoins. Now, in terms of the return, 11% in the companies. So um, the companies is probably the more risk averse or less risk approach. And again, less return, guys. Remember that all, always fits together. Commodities, uh, just from a gold perspective, it, in the last six months, it's grown by 25%. So that's been a great thing for my portfolio. And then Bitcoin has been doing really well. So the 38% is mostly because of the Bitcoin um, offering there. So here, just to get even a little bit more practical, this is uh, essentially the setup that I have in Easy Equities. So I've scheduled a whole bunch of automated payments, right? So first of all, the payment comes from Standard Bank. My salary comes into Standard Bank. The 29th of August, 5,200 Rand gets sent to this company. Once the 5,200 lands in this company, it gets the, the, the 5,000 gets distributed between these different funds. So you can see every month, 1,000 Rand is put into the Ashburton Global 1,200 companies. 500 goes into DCX token, that is um, Bitcoin. Uh, that's the t top 10 performing Bitcoins. Uh, gold, 1,000 goes into gold. 500 into, uh, well, 1,000 goes into the two tech uh, companies that, I, that I'm looking at. So there's an example of how it's completely automated. The money comes in, it goes out. I don't even touch it. I don't even know it's there. So I don't have the temptation to spend it on entertainment. Right, because remember, spend less than you earn and you can you can become quite wealthy. Now the point of this uh, workshop was also to speak about how to get into the property market with very little money. Because the reality is, you know, property is probably the best investment and it's something that I'm very passionate about. But it's also a very expensive class to get into. You know, you need a, a down payment, a deposit, um, and it's not always the cheapest investment. So an, a, a real estate investment trust is your option to get into property without a lot of money. So uh, a, a rate is essentially a company or group of companies that owns, operates, and finances income producing properties. So think about the Coca-Cola example. You can buy a little portion of Coca-Cola. And if Coca-Cola if Coca-Cola does well, your stock goes up and you get some dividends. Same with the rate, except it's not Coca-Cola, it's a property company, you know. Um, so a property developer, for instance. Here's an example on Easy Equities. If you put in the word R-E-I-T, these are some of the funds that you have access to. So the first one there, uh, One Invest Global Rate Index. So it's essentially going to be the top, you know, 50 uh, global property developers uh, that will be put into a package, and then you can buy into that. If you click into um, that, you know, find out more information about it, you can see what's actually happened over the last year with this specific stock, right? So, I mean, I know lots of people who, you know, they go into the detail of reading the trend and all of that stuff. Uh, you know, the, the reality is I've got a full-time job, I've got a business, I've got a property stuff. Um, for me, I just wanted something automatic in the background that's just churning, right? Because I want to play the compound interest game. I know I'm playing 18 holes. I know that I'm not winning the first 15 holes. But if I win the last three holes, I win the game. So it's quite cool. You can go into Easy Equities. You can go and find one or two uh, st stock buckets that you want to invest in. What you can see here is that 
you know, in, in March 20, um, 20th of March this year, obviously that's when the lockdown pretty much began. You can see there was a huge drop in the stock. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense because people weren't, you know, trusting the property market anymore. Um, and then you can look at a bit of a longer term. That was the last year. This is the maximum. So this is the last two, two and a half years. And what you can see is from uh, 14th March uh, 2018 up until now, there's actually been a growth of 30%. So there you can start to see, right? The reward is potentially 31%. The risk is probably about 8%. Is that within your appetite? If it is, I would automate it. Schedule every month to have one or two payments go off. Slowly but surely start to, to get a slither of all of these companies. So it's about creating a system. Guys, ultimately that is, I think, what's going to make uh, everybody's financial future a bit better, right? So you get your monthly salary. It comes into the bank account that you own, whatever that bank is, APSA, Standard Bank, NetBank, doesn't matter. All right, that money comes in, you're going to budget to pay yourself first. So you're going to put 3,000 Rand into a tax-free investment. Okay? Um, you know, please go and speak to a financial advisor or to somebody about this because, guys, that is really, in my opinion, if you don't have that going, that is the lowest hanging fruit and that's the best way to get started by building some, some reserves. I would definitely recommend an RA. A retirement annuity, not more than 10% of your salary, uh, and the only reason I would recommend it is to reduce your tax. Um, from my experience and from interviewing many other people, uh, the returns you're going to get are dismal. It's going to take forever, but because you get the tax benefit, it's worth playing the game. So I would say an RA is definitely useful. Please get some sort of short-term savings, three to six months. Um, statistically, if you have three to six months, you can outlive 90% of the rest of the country. And if you have some of those financial reserves, when times get tight, at least you won't be struggling. So I know it's hard to do, obviously, to come up with that amount of money. But as you go along, just try and save a little bit more every month. Try and spend a little less than you earn. And then I would definitely say a portion of your, of your salary can be distributed to some riskier items. So maybe you want to set up a easy equities account and you're just going to put 500 Rand in per month. You know, you're not going to play heavy. You're going to just buy one rate every month. You're going to pay 500 Rand at the end of the year. You're going to log in and see, you know, was it worth it? Did it work out? It didn't work out. Cool. Cancel that payment. All right, guys, just because you're putting in a, a debit order doesn't mean you can't ever cancel it. You can cancel it really, really quickly. I think the thing is our human tendency is to... Um, is not to save, right? Um, all of us have gotten used to using our entire monthly salary. Um, so we have to bypass our human conditioning and automate something that we know we can't change. There's no human intervention in my system, which means I can't um, fuck it up. Sorry for the, yeah, for the swear word, but I can't mess it up because I'm not going to, I'm not going to interrupt the process and because it's a machine, the machine's just going to do it and repeat. And that's where we tap into compound interest so that ladies and gentlemen is uh how you can become an automatic millionaire and i i think what really excites me about this presentation is that with enough time anyone from any background can change their financial future it's going to take some time compound interest works on the fact that it's going to take 20 30 years but starting now is the best time i mean actually the best time was you know plant the tree 20 years ago but the next best time is now because when you, as soon as you start investing, you start tapping into, into compound interest. So guys, that was pretty much what uh, we covered tonight, right? Uh, introduction to investing and really understanding the balance of risk versus reward. The compound interest phenomenon, how the rich stay rich by acting poor. The automatic millionaire, how to guarantee financial success. And then, you know, for those of you wanting to get into the property market, but maybe a little bit hesitant to put a down payment down, maybe you should start with a rate and slowly but surely become a property mogul. Um, so we are coming to the end of the presentation. Um, for those of you who are interested in knowing more about property as an investment class and, and really understanding how to run the numbers and determine if a deal makes financial sense, please check out our workshop. Um, I have put a little call to action button there that says, um, uh, let me just see if I've got it here. This little green button here that says half day workshop. Uh, if you just click on that, it'll take you to a page where you can uh, make a payment and you can join our three hour half day workshop. So this uh, is going to be a workshop hosted by myself. Um, so I will be speaking. Um, 
teaching you how to calculate the return on investment. Live deal analysis, so we'll do about 10 or 15 live deals. Um, so if you do come to the workshop, you can bring a deal and I'll essentially coach you on the call. Um, and yeah, just for 499, three hours, I'll share with you as much as I can. Um, I love teaching, I love sharing. So the, the 500 Rand is just, is just for my time to share some knowledge with you guys. Um, and yeah, we'll be looking at live deals like this uh, deal, for example, is a great, great Berea opportunity. Um, I'm currently in the offer to purchase process. So I'll just take you through the steps that I took to uh, not only closing the deal, but also raising the finance. Uh, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential of power. Action is power, ladies and gentlemen. So um, for those of you who, who do want to still know more about property but aren't going to join us on the webinar, please go and check out my YouTube page, uh, Lawrence Bull Property Coach. I've got about a hundred different videos on property investing. Uh, for me, I believe that the knowledge, you know, lots of the knowledge is free already online. So go and check it out. Uh, the true power is in the action. Uh, that's where you're going to change your life. Uh, also, really quickly, uh, we always get this question after the webinar, so I'm just going to quickly touch on it. We do have a property coaching program where you get six sessions with one of our coaches. These are our four coaches. Uh, if you do want to know more, just email me, learns at housebuyers.coza, subject coaching. I'll send you a bit more information about our program. Fantastic. So let's quickly jump into the questions section. I'm going to answer a couple of questions. And then I'll have you on your way. Okay, so let me just see here. So the first question, Sadiq, how do I protect myself and my money in an investment opportunity with a partner, but a deposit must be paid to secure the deal? Sure. So Sadiq, I'm assuming you're buying a property and you need to pay a deposit with a partner. So did he, I'm assuming that your partner brought you the deal and you have to put the money down. Right, so the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to have a good offer to purchase. Um, so you need to see some sort of signed agreement where the property is being purchased at the price that has been set. Then you also need to have an acknowledgement of debt or some sort of contract between you and your partner that stipulates how your relationship will go. So are you, you know, putting down 500,000 or whatever, 50,000 Rand as a deposit? Well, if the deal falls through, what happens? How can you exit the deal? How can you recover your money? Those are the questions you need to be asking when you're working with a partner. Okay, let's see here. How to protect my investment property portfolio against being taken by a divorce? I'm about to get married in a couple of months coming. <laughs> I hope your wife hasn't read that statement. <laughs> so then you might not be getting married. No, it's a good question, and I think it's realistic. You know, they, they always say when you're getting married, plan for the divorce, because when you're actually getting divorced, it gets ugly. So Zakes or Zax, I'm not a I'm not an attorney, but um, I do know that you can get married in or out of the community of property. So essentially, what that means is that everything you've bought before the marriage be, stays yours, um, and everything she's bought before the marriage stays hers. And then when you get married, everything that you buy after marriage is something that you share fifty fifty. You know, so that would probably be my best advice. Uh, if you've got a property portfolio going into the marriage. Make sure that you sign out of community of property. I think it's the out, or I think it's the out of community of property. Um, and then anything you bring into the marriage is yours. Anything that she brings is hers. And then when you're married, whatever you buy together is shared. Okay. Does Corona or fluctuating economy affect a tax-free call investment, or is there no risk at all? Great question. So you've got the option, right? You can invest in a tax-free investment vehicle, but you can go into the stock market and you can maybe make 20% return, but equally you can make 20% loss. So the reason why I went to a standard bank is because they guarantee a minimum interest rate linked to the repo rate. So for me, that 36,000 per month, that is really long-term. You know, uh, for me, I'd rather have the three and a half percent, but guaranteed every month for the next 20 years and it's linked to repo so as the repo rate goes up again obviously the interest rate will go up again so for me i wanted a no risk or incredibly low risk vehicle that's why i chose standard bank but you have the option what are the tax implications of rates uh, so that's a great question it's going to be the same as uh, any other uh, dividends company uh, that you would have so uh, let's say that, uh, and, and the rate has, a, uh, has sometimes different models, right? So you can get the money out by 
by monthly repayments, right? So they can pay you a dividend, they can pay you a, a, a percentage of the cash flow. You know, there's different ways in which they can structure it. Now, what you've got to do is in your personal name is you've got to manage your tax, right? So if you've got a salary of 20,000 plus you're getting an additional income of 5,000 Rand per month from a rate that you've invested in, your effective income is 25% and that's what you're going to be taxed on. So really the, the biggest tax implication is you're going to be making money from this investment in your rate and SARS wants a portion of any money that you make. So whatever your, your um, tax bracket is at that time, it'll apply to any additional income that you make in your personal name. And this is where, you know, setting up a company might be a little bit more viable because, uh, you know, you can, you can be a bit more tax efficient in a company as in your personal name. But the, I do have a video on that on the YouTube channel, so go check that out. Um, let me take one more question. So I've got here uh, from Tembisa. Which should be the priority between paying off your debt or investment? So that's a fantastic question. It always comes down back to return on investment. Okay, so let's say you've got a property here, property A. The property has a million rand bond left on it. Okay, and then you've got property B here. Now the question is, should you pay this one off quicker or should you invest here? Now, if you pay this one off quicker, what you're saving is whatever the interest rate is. Okay, so let's say that you've got a million rand loan and the interest rate the bank is charging is 8%. Okay, by paying quicker into your bond means you're saving that 8% penalty, which means you're making an 8% return effectively. If you've got a property investment over here that's bringing a 6% return, I would say rather put the money into your bond because that's working at a better rate. But if you've got a great opportunity, maybe a, a 25 bed you know, student accommodation where the return is 20% plus, I'd be like, well, there's more risk there, but there's equally more reward. So your bond is a safe, it's, it's a risk-free investment. You're gonna be getting 8% because that's what the banks are charging as interest. This Property development is 20%, but I could also lose 20%. So I think, I hope that kind of answers your question. The, 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 the methodology is really simple. Um, it's just about, uh, you know, balancing your risk and your reward, spending less than you earn, compounding and automating the process so that in 20 years' time, you're guaranteed to have a better financial future than you have now. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. I see here that Mandy has uh, joined uh, the Easy Equities. And yeah, it's awesome. I'm sure there's other tools as well. Go check it out. Um, yeah, awesome. Let's see here. We've got Katlejo from Soweto. Andide's read my book. Awesome. Uh, recommendations of rates to invest in? Um, hmm. It's a tough one. I would say maybe redefine properties. Could maybe look at them. Uh, it depends, you know, this this whole corona thing is, has messed a lot of people up. Um, I might go for like a global rate. So that's the one that I went for. I just thought it was a bit more safe to have a bit of global exposure, you know. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, nice, short and sweet session finished at uh, 9 o'clock on the dot, which is great. Um, please, guys, for those of you who are interested in joining our, our half-day workshop, please click the link. It is only... 499 you get a half a day with me i'm happy to answer any and all questions um and you know for me it's just about having a platform to share so go check it out it's on the 29th of august 29 uh, 2020 um yeah and in the meantime if you've got a recommendation of a topic that you want me to unpack at the next event please do so this rate uh, this rate topic was actually sponsored or well, requested by somebody uh, two weeks ago so we put it on as the next topic so if there's something that you're looking for even just put it in the chat bar now you know I'm, I'm happy to go and research it if i don't know it myself anything financial property investing focused um, maybe investing overseas you know trying to buy property in in the us or the uk that could be an interesting topic maybe um or how to buy using a stock fell, or you know how to what the ins and outs are investing in a um, in the townships. You know those kind of questions. I don't necessarily have all the answers, but I'm happy to go do the research. Otherwise, guys, you will receive uh, your recording afterwards. Um, thank you for joining us, and until next time, happy investing. <laughs>